welcome to the afternoon of day one, SMR 2014. It's absolutely great to be joined by Peter Levitt alongside me. Peter, thanks so much for giving your time. Can you first of all tell us a bit about yourself? Yeah, I'm Dr Peter Lovett and I'm a, a principal lecturer and reader in the psychology of dance at the University of Hertfordshire where I run the Dance Psychology Lab. Awesome, so to, to the people listening to this that might sound a little bit outside of the box of a normal market research kind of perspective but mm-hmm. I've just sat inside your presentation which I thought was awesome and really interesting and I want you to just tell us a little bit about it briefly if you can. Well what we do in the lab is, is core research into how moving our body might change the way we think and solve problems Mm -hmm. and how we communicate by using our body. So some of our core research looks at how we communicate emotions through our moving body. But of course we also try to understand how we move our body, how natural that is. So we look at things like how our hormonal makeup influences how we move our body. And this is fascinating because what it shows is that people when they watch you move your body, they make judgments about you. They don't know what your hormone level is, but they make judgments about you based on that information, mm. which, we, we, which we find incredible. And we also do research looking at the effect of moving your body on thinking and problem solving. What we found there is that when people move their body in one way, it makes them more creative in terms of their thought processes and their level of, of creativity. But we also find when they move in a different way, they become better at solving convergent problem solving puzzles, so finding one correct answer that they need. So just delving into that a a little bit deeper, just briefly, when you say moving our body in terms kind of um, solving certain types of problems in comparison to others, can you give us a little bit of examples about each of those kind of of uh, issues? Yeah, what we found is that when people move their body in an improvised way, so when they can't plan in advance where they're going to move their body, so it could be a little movement of the hands or the shoulders or some kind of movement happening wi- with the body. They then become more creative verbally. So there's cross-modal creativity priming going on. You move your body in an improvised way. And of course, that unlocks some of the, the barriers to thinking in a divergent way. So people become more creative in their thoughts, which is phenomenal when you think about it. Just moving your body in, a, in an improvised way changes the way you think and solve problems, which is great. We also found that when people move their body in a structured way, so when we teach people a routine, we teach people a pattern of movements, and we get them to execute that movement pattern, they become faster at solving convergent problem-solving puzzles. So their cognitive processes seem to be speeding up, which is amazing, uh, without any loss of accuracy. So they can find the answer to given problems. So again, we're seeing this relationship between the body and the mind. What I find fascinating about this area is that traditionally we think the mind does all the clever stuff and the body is used for playful things. Mm. So we play with our bodies, we do sport with it, we make love with it, we have all these playful things with our bodies, but we do all the clever stuff with our thinking, with our heads. Mm. And of course educational establishments are set up for that distinction. Mm. So in in universities we have long benches where people sit behind these benches in schools, they have chairs in offices, we have, we, we're corralled into these offices. And of course what we found is that when, when you can break away from those, when you actually use your body as part of the thinking process and you're allowed to move your body freely, it changes the way you think, which is fantastic. So what I'm trying to encourage people to do more and more is to use their body, allow people to get up and move around, you know, get them experimenting with their body, even if it's just shaking their shoulders, <laughs> just using their body in a, in a playful way because that will change how they think in a very clever way. Fascinating stuff. And, and can you just quickly give the bit of background into how SMR approached you or you approached SMR and how you kind of came to, to kind of give this presentation in market research context? Uh, SMR approached me and they, um, somebody else had seen one of my presentations before and made the link between the, the talk on creativity and movement mm. and thought it would be appropriate for this type of an audience. Mm. Um, when I arrived yesterday here, I didn't really know exactly how my presentation would fit into the overall agenda of this meeting um, because I don't come from a market research environment but it's become clear since I've been here reading the literature that, that's come with it and talking to Massimo and other people here that there's a huge overlap between what I'm doing and what they're doing in that market research field so I'm very interested to learn more about how my theoretical work and experimental work can be applied in the real world. I certainly think there's a massive link and it was an awesome presentation you did. Peter thanks so much for joining me and uh, great presentation once again. Thank you very much. Thank you.